Hey everybody, I'm Jesse and you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. This episode was sponsored by abetterrootplanner.com. Zach is in Europe right now using a better root planner to get around. It sounds like some of the superchargers are being iced by Model S's and, well, I guess they're not iced, they're, they're EV'd by Model S's. Um, and he's been using a lot of other chargers in Europe using the A Better Root Planner app. So I think you should go check it out because they're also helping to support this show. All right, so I want to get into the, today's show. It's going to be a little different. You may have noticed that my co-host is not here. So we're going to talk about something that I've been thinking about a lot. So usually on this show, we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about how climate change is bad, and we're looking at ways to try and prevent it. Now, as with anything, it's important to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at perhaps the biggest picture. So about a week and a half ago, I watched this YouTube video called Time Lapse of the Future. Like the name suggests, it takes a look into the future of the Earth, the stars, and the universe. I highly recommend you go watch it. You can watch it before I start talking, you can watch it afterward, watch it at some point. It's amazing. I'm gonna sort of talk about some of the points in it, um, but you should watch it because it does a much better job than my secondhand recollection. So it starts off in 2019 and every second is a year, and then every five seconds, this, it speeds up, doubles in speed. And it's to show what our potential future might hold. Um, the first few seconds are the colonization of Mars by SpaceX. So I was basically already hooked. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And as time goes forward, time speeds up so quickly that it's hard to really grasp. You know, you're like, okay, like it's 2019 now. And then in the future, it'll be 2020. And it, before you know it, it's, you know, already th the year 3000. So it goes through some of the effects of climate change, of, of glaciers melting and sea levels rising. Very quickly, things become unrecognizable. Basically, the human aspect of this video is very, very short. Um, we don't really get to see exactly what life is going to be like, mostly because we don't know. But the video does try to cover things that we do know are gonna happen, such as the Voyager making it to another star, asteroid impacts, the formation of new continents, the Hale-Bopp comet returning, and in about a billion years, the entire planet is a barren waste with no life. That's three minutes into the video. It's, pre it's pretty sad. I wasn't really expecting this. Like I was expecting there to be more time, you know, and a billion years is a long time, but in the, in the video, this is a 30 minute long video and in three minutes, we are already at no plant life on the planet. Basically, the luminosity of the sun is going to increase, which is going to kill off all the plants on the earth. Then in about eight billion years, the earth is swallowed by the sun. And this is like, happens 20 seconds later. The sun then becomes a white dwarf, as do almost all the stars in the night sky, and the universe is plunged into darkness. I'm going to skip ahead a few trillion trillion years uh, when the white dwarfs all cool off and turn into black dwarfs, meaning that any civilizations living around them will be in trouble. And it gets worse. Any matter that escapes the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies will eventually, potentially, evaporate. Literally, the protons will be fizzled away into radiation as the universe stretches them apart. And we're only about a third of the way through the video. It goes on, describing how black holes will eat each other and slowly fizzle away and then finally explode and the photons released will eventually slow down and freeze in time, meaning that time is irrelevant because nothing is changing in the universe. And it's pretty sad. And I was very sad at the end of this video because you often think of the future being this bright, positive thing. And well, when you get into the larger time scales of the universe, it's, and it's pretty horrifying to think that entropy is going to be the winner in a universe so amazing that it can harbor intelligent life. And I know a lot of people don't generally feel sympathy towards protons, and I get that, but the thought that the protons that are me, the protons that have ever been me, and the protons that have ever been people that I love, thinking about them dissolving into space, into nothingness, it makes me really sad. If for no other reason that it means that it becomes impossible for those people to be remembered. Not that it's important in the grand scheme of things, but it's frightening to think that the entire universe will simply become practically nothing. I mean, I, I had one thought after I watched it, I was, I was very sad, 
And I was thinking, like, wh- what could we do? Like, what could be a little thing that we could do to, that would make me feel better a little bit? And, you know, I was thinking you could influence somehow how a black hole is going to ex- explode, like the last black hole to ever explode. You could somehow influence how it would explode, and it could... All the photons that shoot off across the sky when they eventually freeze, they could spell something like a name or like a phrase or something. It's not much. No one would ever be able to see it. Nothing would ever happen to allow anyone to see it. And it would be kind of this morbid joke as at the end of the universe. And I know that it's very, very sad to be thinking about it. And it's probably not what you were expecting this video to be like, but... You know, it it might not be like this. Of course, this is the future of the universe according to the best science we have to date. And there may be new discoveries that lead to different, perhaps less bleak outcomes. However, this is all we've got to go on. If we are to accept this picture of the future as one of the most accurate that science can provide us, it seems as though we should aim to avoid the heat death of the universe, or at very least, kick off another universe, which science seems to think is possible, despite the fact that we don't know exactly how, nor have the means to do so at this point. Now, uh, I know that this is a very, very existential topic, and uh, I apologize if it's giving you any existential anxiety. It certainly gives me a lot of it, so I apologize. But, you know, I think it is important to think this way. I think it's important to think further than ourselves, look at the largest possible scale, zoom out as far as you can to get a big picture of things, and then sort of assess where you want to go from there. It doesn't mean that this has to be, you know, your all-encompassing life goal, but I think that we should have goals as a species that reconcile with this. Either the prevention of the end of the universe, or perhaps the beginning of a new universe as a goal, we as a species should work backwards to identify obstacles and try and overcome them. So our mission would then become prevent our own extinction, prevent the loss of knowledge, and continue to acquire knowledge. Just three simple things. With these in mind, we can see a series of gates that prevent us from reaching, hopefully, a good ending or maybe a never-ending scenario. One where we've truly unlocked the secrets of the universe and potentially can prevent the end of the world. One of the first gates on this list um, we talk a lot about on this show, it's climate change. I mean, I don't think that enough people truly understand the implications of climate change. A lot of people understand that sea levels will rise and that could lead to a bunch of bad stuff. But in terms of this larger view, it could lead to a global dark age where much of our research is lost. I know that it's hard to wrap your head around, but imagine losing the internet. What that would do to the world. Day one, would everything go bad? Maybe. What about a week without internet across the whole world? How would global trade happen? It would get problematic pretty quickly. And climate change is going to lead to lots and lots of problems. So this would be one of the first gates, one of the first things that we as a species should look at and say... Is this going to be a problem? How can we fix it? How can we overcome this in order to survive long enough to come up with answers? Another gate that doesn't get talked about much anymore, but it used to a lot, nuclear war. For some reason, we've just sort of taken that worry out of our minds. I think that it's it's a little bit too big to be looming over us all the time, but it's still there. It's not quite as escalated as it was in the Cold War, but There are still nukes ready to nuke the world at a moment's notice. Future gates towards our success would be, you know, asteroid impact, a super volcano, a deadly gamma ray burst. Basically, we we can't just rely on this planet to be safe for human life forever. I'm not saying that you need to worry about it in your lifetime or that your children need to worry about it or that your children's children necessarily need to worry about an asteroid impact or a deadly gamma ray burst, but... At some point, probability would suggest that these things would happen. And so therefore, we need to move. In fact, we know that we have to move because if we don't, the sun will kill us at some point. And this is one of the reasons why I like Elon Musk. He's two steps ahead already. What are his goals? 
make transportation sustainable and make life interplanetary. He already wants to get us to Mars. And now you might be saying that Mars isn't going to necessarily be safe if the, if the sun is going to explode. It's a good point, but it's definitely the first stepping stone. It's probably one of the most achievable stepping stones that we have in our solar system um, before we have to start thinking about interstellar travel. Interplanetary travel is probably the, the first step. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, if you haven't tuned out already. You're saying, aren't we being a little high-minded to think that we're the only ones who can stop the heat death of the universe? And you're right, we might not be the only ones. There might be other advanced civilizations working on the same problems, working on preventing the heat death of the universe or um, finding ways to get to other stars that will hopefully let them live a lot longer. Maybe they're just preparing to get as far as they can. They're, they're thinking a little bit about how to live near a white dwarf. Wouldn't it be cool if we actually got to meet them? Not only would we hopefully have similar goals of survival and the prevention of the end of everything, but they would probably have some pretty amazing art. I know that it seems like a pretty small bonus when we're talking about the end of the universe looming over us. You think Game of Thrones is good? Imagine learning about an entire other civilization and imagine what they might have come up with. And think of the things we get to show them. Even if we can't prevent the end of the universe, being able to reach out to another intelligent species might be pretty amazing. Now, and I, and I hear other people who are saying, what's the rush? We have a billion years. And to that, I would say we don't have a billion years. At the moment, we're looking at about 100 if we're lucky. Climate change will almost certainly cause humanity enough trouble to end whatever sort of golden age we are currently in if we don't do something about it now. Which brings me to why I'm talking about the end of the universe anyway. On this show, we're usually talking about perhaps one of the very first steps on becoming an interplanetary, interstellar, intergalactic species, which will hopefully grant us enough time to research the mysteries of the universe and do something to prevent our own demise, or at the very least, delay it or create a new universe, something much bigger than ourselves. And I think that we as a species are too in the trenches. We're too thinking about today, tomorrow, next week, next quarter. And we don't do enough thinking about what's going to happen to us, like, way later. We barely think about what's going to happen to our children on this planet. And we certainly don't think about what's going to happen to our grandchildren. I think that we need to change the way that we look at the universe. I think it's important to think about what's going to happen after that, and after that, and after that. Anyway, for those of you still with me who aren't having a terrifying existential crisis, um, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. I appreciate it. You know, we started this channel uh, about three years ago, and we are almost at 100,000 subscribers. And that's amazing. I, I don't think that either Zach or I predicted that this would happen. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you watching out there. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. Thank you to the people who like the videos and support us on Patreon. We can't do it without the people who support us on Patreon. There's no way that we could get these lights. There's no way that we could get this camera. There's no way that we could pay for the editors to edit through all of my mistakes in this episode. We really couldn't have done any of this without them. And I want to thank everyone on Discord as well. Thank you so much for communicating with us and communicating with each other. We're so glad to have you as a part of our community. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know.